Don't you just love hearing great news? I know I do. Because bad news is bad. Good news is good, but great news is even better. And just to see this great news that we all got today that we have been anticipating, we have been having a bunch of different conversations about it. We had all been wondering when something like this was going to happen, especially pertaining this particular player. But we finally got some clarification and great clarification today. Ronnie Stanley. <laughs> Ronnie Stanley, Ronald Stanley. I, well, I don't know if his first name is Ronald, but Ronnie Stanley is back. Ronnie Stanley is officially back. He passed his physical and he has been taken off. They say, Ronnie, get off of there. He has been taken off the physically unable to perform list. So Ronnie Stanley is back. And that is great 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 news great news and it couldn't have come at a better time john harbaugh he had a lot of people talking you know john harbaugh always get a lot of people talking when it comes to injuries but he talked about that um he would like for ronnie stanley and tyus bowser uh for them when they with them coming off of the pup list he would like uh for them to practice for about two to three weeks uh before week one and it was getting down to that time where it's like, whoo, I don't know. Well, let's see. Uh, because week one is like literally around the corner. Um, but Ronnie Stanley, he ends up coming off the PUP list. Now, um, with Ronnie Stanley, while we are all excited that he's coming off the physically unable to perform list, and that is a great thing. So that means he's ready. He's fully healthy. And that's, that's what we wanted. That is what we wanted. And I'm pretty sure that all Ravens fans would agree like, hey, if Ronnie Stanley isn't or wasn't fully healthy, then Ravens, we would have no problem with them putting, put it, with them putting him on the pup list because that would uh, allow them to get Ronnie Stanley fully healthy instead of rushing him back. But I'm pretty sure the Ravens learned their lesson from last season when it comes to rushing players back. Because this season, this offseason, they've been really taking their time with a lot of people. Now, expectations with Ronnie Stanley. We have to make sure we temper expectations. Now, when you look at the offensive line last year, I, I don't think it can get much worse than that. I, I really don't. And, you know, something that's very interesting. Shout out to my guy, uh, Kevin Redline, because he pointed this out to me because I, I talked about in the video that how the Bengals, they had the worst offensive line in football. The worst one. But my guy Kevin, he was like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. But remember, the Ravens, their offensive line was probably just as bad, if not actually worse, than the Bengals' offensive line. And I was like, hmm, what is he talking about? But then he kept going and he said, well, the Ravens, the Bengals, didn't, they don't have a Lamar Jackson. They don't have a Tyler Huntley. And you know both Lamar Jackson and Tyler Huntley, they can move. So the way that they can move, they can evade defenders. And Joe Burrow can move a little bit now, but he can't move like Lamar and Tyler. So... And I talked about this. Before. I said this back in 2019. I said that Lamar Jackson, he, while the offensive line was good, I felt like Lamar Jackson overrated the offensive line. He made them overrated just because of everything that he was able to do. Not saying they were bad, but Lamar Jackson just made them look that much better because he can make people miss. So that would take away from them giving up a sack. Say, for instance, somebody blows past somebody on the offensive line. Lamar makes a miss. Oh, okay. They didn't give up a sack. All right, great. So that's not on the stat sheet. But anyway, um, Ronnie Stanley being back with expectations. We got to temper expectations. Because like I said, nothing can be worse than what we saw last year with the offensive line. But with Ronnie Stanley, I don't think it would be fair, especially since he hasn't played football in like a year and a half. I don't think it would be fair to feel like, all right, Ronnie Stanley, you're going to go out there and dominate from jump. I mean, we would love that. I would love that. I ain't going to complain if he goes out there and dominates from jump. No problems with that. But I don't think it would be fair to just – Assume that, all right, once he's back out there, he's just going to be this dominant left tackle. He's going to be one of the best left tackles in the league from jump. Again, we will hope that that is the case, but I don't think it should be. I don't think that would be a fair expectation. Now, again, I do expect him to be much better than what we saw last year, but still. Another concern, too, is that Ronnie Stanley, he hasn't played a full season yet in his career, I don't believe. So, um, not only do we hope that he's fully healthy, 
but we hope that he can remain healthy. Man, I, I know with this injury, with his injuries, it has been sparking a lot of conversations amongst people. I know, like, well, is somebody, they keep being hurt, and there's a lot of questions, question marks surrounding them. I saw a lot of people, they, they started wondering, like, man, what's his contract looking like? They start thinking about them thoughts, but now with Ronnie Stanley being back, hopefully he can put a lot of those thoughts at ease um, through both his play on the field and hopefully his stay as well, him staying on the field. So that is great news. Great news that Ronnie Stanley is back because it just because y'all remember around this time last year, we weren't getting great news as Ravens fans around this time last year. Last year was all bad news. Last year, was, it was all bad. This guy hurt. That guy's hurt. That guy's hurt. Oh, he's out for the year. He's out for the year. He's out. That's all we kept getting. And then it lasted throughout the whole season, the whole season. So, yeah. But anyway, um, while we did get that great news, it also came with some not so great news. Um, and this was actually surprising to me because I even though like last year, because he got hurt in the last game of the season and he was really coming along, getting better and better as the season went. Uh, and you felt so bad for him because it's like, man, this is a season, not necessarily a wasted season, but it's a season that's it, it go, it's going down the drain. And to be hurt in the last game of the season, oh, you felt so bad for Tyus Bowser. But he was somebody I was for sure like, all right, yeah, he, he getting ready to come back any day now. Tyus Bowser definitely going to be ready for week one. Because we know his injury happened so late, but then when you saw him walking, you ain't seen no limp or nothing like that. And it was like, okay, no, nah, nah, oh, yeah, Bowser's going to be straight. Oh, yeah, we, we getting Bowser back by week one for sure. We getting him back. But nope, because they placed Bowser on the pup list. So Bowser has been placed on a physically unable to perform list. So now with the new rules, that means that Tyus Bowser, he's going to be missing at least um, the first four games. The first four games of the season. Uh, then at that point, the Ravens will have to decide whether they're going to activate him to the active roster. And I think he should be ready by then. But hey, I, I, thought, he should, I thought he was going to be ready by, um, by week one. So I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Um, so I, I guess that injury again, the timing was really bad though. When you really think about it, the timing was really bad last game of the season in January. So the beginning of January and to be playing already from a torn Achilles, uh, in September. So that's January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. So eight months that would take some speedy recovery, uh, some amazing doctors. And I know the NFL got them. Um, but everybody recovers differently. So even if Tyus Bowser, say for instance right now, he is 85%, even 90%. I'm not mad at this. I'm not mad at them holding him out. I'm not mad at them being like, All right, you know what? We don't want to risk it. We don't want to rush it. We want you for the long haul. Not mad at that at all. Surprised because I, I really thought that he was going to be ready this week. But surprised, but not mad at all. And I don't think anybody should be, especially if y'all remember last year. Remember last season. And again, it's, 17, it's a 17 game schedule. It's a, it's a very long season. It goes by fast, but it's a very long season. So you would prefer having guys for the long haul than the short term, especially if they're not all the way ready yet. So kudos for Ravens to, for being patient. Um, Jeff Zrebic also reported that the Ravens, they signed a punter, uh, Cameron Dicker. So I, I guess he'll just be for tomorrow for the, for the preseason game because they like, hey, Jordan Stout, you, you good to go. You, we don't need you punting. We don't need you using all your leg energy. We'll, we'll just have Cameron do it. So, hey, I wonder how much he's getting paid. Because you, you're getting ready to be on a team for like a couple of days. I wonder how much you get paid with that. Um, but anyway, and that's that. So, um, whew, we're going to see. We are going to see uh, how this thing goes. I'm just, I'm very excited about that great news. And then even the not so great news, when you think about it, it is a... Um, I'm happy that they're doing the right thing because obviously he's not 100 percent ready to go uh, if he's going on the PUP. So kudos to the Ravens for being smart and being cautious with two of their bigger players, especially Ronnie Stanley. Like and he's literally one of their bigger players because he's offensive line on their left tackle. Um, but I just really hope that because Ronnie Stanley, again, he is like the, the Jimmy Smith on offense to where. You know what they can do when they're healthy. They do have some injury issues, but you know what they can do when they're healthy. And they, they completely change the Ravens 
when they're healthy. They, they, and when they're not healthy, everything changes for the worse in a major way. And y'all remember that, that impact that Jimmy Smith had, man, because I remember so many times, so many games, so many playoffs. Oh, Jimmy Smith's playing? Yes, Jimmy Smith's not playing. Oh, man. It changed everything just like that. So I think that that has been one of the biggest reasons why over the years the Ravens really, really invested into that cornerback position like crazy. Like especially when um when they the years where they brought in Brandon Carr, it was like oh yeah, and they really start like they're like we can't we can't have this no more to where if Jimmy Smith is out then everything falls apart. They couldn't do it. So and they, yeah, they had drafted Marlon Humphrey obviously, Brandon signed Brandon Carr, traded for Marcus Peters. Um, so yeah, y'all been seeing how they've been moving, but anyway, that's that. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And just like Ronnie Stanley is no more. We out.